Before we get started, make sure to turn on post notification and subscribe to the channel. 10 Former WWE Superstars Who Are Struggling on the Indies Number 10. Darren Young It was quite a surprise when WWE decided to release Darren Young as he had been with the company ever since the Nexus days and was working alongside Hall of Famer Bob Backlund. But even with that, he couldn't get over. It was then expected that Young would be picked up by plenty of places on the independent scene, but that just hasn't been the case. And he has had to work on the edge, just like he was doing in WWE before his departure. It likely didn't help him that he was injured for so long before WWE decided to let him go because so many people just forgot about him completely, which is why no company is looking to take a risk on him. Number 9. Evan Bourne For someone with as much in-ring talent as Evan Bourne, has he should be doing a lot more for himself than simply appearing in Impact's Wrestling X division and make occasional appearances in other places. Right now, wrestling is focused more on the actual in-ring quality more so than ever, meaning someone like Evan Bourne should be thriving. But an incident in Japan that landed him in jail pretty much ended his hopes of being a major star in the company like New Japan, where he's best suited. Bourne was arrested for having marijuana and that brought a swift end to his career in the country, meaning his options are a lot more limited than what most people think, which is why it's not a surprise that he is still struggling. Number 8. James Storm It was a surprise to many when James Storm decided to turn down a chance to join WWE. He stated that it was because of personal issues, but the cowboy never returned even after he finished up with Impact Wrestling a second time. When Storm finished up with Impact, most people presumed he would finally return, but that decision never happened, and instead, he has continued to work on the independent scene but failed to become one of the top stars. Storm has appeared consistently for Insane Championship Wrestling in the UK, but even there he isn't considered to be the company's main event name, and instead of being a regular in NXT, he has just struggled on the indies. Number 7. Damien Sandow If you had told fans that Damien Sandow would be totally out of the wrestling business at this point in time, when he was carrying the Money in the Bank briefcase, most would have said you were insane, as Sandow was one of the hottest talents in wrestling at one point. However, after he was released by WWE, Sandow's love for the sport seemed to just totally disappear and hasn't been the same since, hence why he has pretty much quit the business altogether. Following his release, Impact were quick to bring Sandow in hoping to make the most out of his momentum that he had following his time in WWE. But the fans just didn't react to him at all, and it quickly became clear that his spark had run out. Number 6. Summer Rae When Summer Rae's time with WWE came to an end, many people weren't sure whether she would continue wrestling, but she made a statement claiming that she was going to. However, she has failed to live up to that promise. Often than a few occasional appearances at Battle Championship Wrestling, Summer Rae hasn't worked much in the ring, despite the huge race in women's wrestling around the independent scene and the fact that Rae can actually work. Summer might not be spending much time in the ring, but she has stayed connected with the wrestling business by appearing at tons of conventions to meet and greet with people who helped made her name. Number 5. Wade Barrett Wade Barrett had some bad news for all the fans when his WWE career came to an end when he revealed he would be taking a break from wrestling and he stuck to his word which has seen him fail to make any real impact in wrestling. Barrett did attach himself to both Define Wrestling and World of Sport but the former Intercontinental Champion didn't get into the ring for either company, instead having an authority role on each show. The only place Barrett has actively wrestled since his WWE departure is for the Ring of Pakistan, now one of the world's biggest independent companies However, he has now joined Lucha Underground and with the bigger company, he has a chance to raise his name value once again. Number 4. Alberto Del Rio To say he is one of WWE's biggest stars, you would expect Alberto Del Rio to be doing a lot better for himself in the wrestling world than he has managed to do. But his backstage attitude seems to be one of the biggest issues. There's no doubt that in the ring he's a great talent. But for the fact he's known for often being late or simply not showing up to shows has led to many independent wrestling companies to not take a chance on him at all. Del Rio's now moving on and looking to create a career for himself in MMA, which at his age could be a risk that isn't worth taking. But when the wrestling bookings have dried up, it is the best way to get people talking about you. Number 3. Kenny Dykstra Kenny Dykstra took a big risk when he decided to return to WWE in 2016 to be part of the storyline between Dolph Ziggler and The Miz, hoping it would either lead to a full-time deal or at least revive his career. Sadly, neither of those things happened, with WWE only using the former Spirit Squad member within that particular storyline and no independent company being interested in someone who hadn't been relevant in such a long time. 
The unfortunate part of the situation for Dykstra is that he was fired from his day job for missing work to be part of the WWE storyline, meaning his gamble had even higher stakes than what anybody initially realized. Number 2. Big Cass Big Cass was another name people were surprised to see be released by WWE after he just had finished up a major singles feud with Daniel Bryan. It seemed like the company had big plans for him, but backstage issues led to his departure and he only agreed with the decision online. Cass clearly didn't take the release well though, as after he served his 90 day no compete clause, he reappeared on the indies and had clearly put on a lot of weight and he looked incredibly out of shape. This has stopped a lot of places from taking the chance on Cass, with many companies clearly a little hesitant to gamble on signing him right now. It seemed like Big Cass was going to get his big break with Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore, but unfortunately, Cass collapsed following a seizure and his wrestling future is currently unknown. Number 1. James Ellsworth Following his WWE career coming to an end, James Ellsworth was actually thriving on the independent scene and was doing an incredible job. He created his own intergender championship and was being booked by every top promotion around from the NWA to Impact Wrestling and more. However, reputation is everything in wrestling and Ellsworth was damaged when some messages and images he had sent to someone underage were brought to light, causing every independent company to drop their booking of him. Right now, it appears that Ellsworth's wrestling career might be over or at the very least on hold as he deals with the bigger issue and tries to clear his name. But if he's unable to, then it will likely be the end of the former WWE superstar. Time to get into this shit. It's really fucking batshit crazy. So... You guys are all, a few of you are like, oh, this is like on you, your fault, but it's literally not. So I met Ellsworth at an indie show Friday, November 9th, and I was like, hey, dad, like, I want to meet him. And my friend came up to me, and she's like, yo, like, I can even get my friend to speak out about this. She was like, yo, he's a total creep. He was asking me for this and that. She's like, at the end of the show, he asked me to meet him at his car and Oh, a lot of other shit. I mean, now she's 30, okay? So I can see that. But me, he asked me my age. And he was like, oh, how old are you? And I was like, oh, I'm 16. And he's like, like, oh, never mind. So I asked him to follow me on Twitter because, you know, I was like, but before, like, I talked to him or anything, I was like, oh, hey, can you follow me on Twitter? So he followed me. And I DM'd him on Saturday. I was just like, oh, hey, good luck wrestling tonight. Because honestly, I can't lie. I was a, I was a fan of him. So I was just like, hey, good luck. And so he asked me for my Snapchat. And I didn't know... This was gonna happen. I did. I didn't call for this at all. And so I was like, "Yeah, sure." So I gave him my Snapchat, and then he added me. And you guys all want his Snapchat? Literally, you can hit me up, and I'll give you the screenshot of him adding me. I have the screenshot of him asking me for my Snapchat. I have screenshots of his nudes. I have screenshots of mirror selfies he sent me. I have screenshots of selfies he sent me. I have videos of nudes he sent me. I have videos of him. I'm not gonna make, go and make shit up like this because that's wrong. Also, when I put the post out, multiple female wrestlers hit me up and have said, This isn't the first time he's done something like this. He is a total creep. Backstage at events, he makes us female wrestlers feel so uncomfortable and tries to get with all of us. So, no, I'm not lying about any of this. I'm sure. Uh, uh, how, uh, yo, I'm getting like, I can't talk. A lot of you are going to take his side, and I'm fine with that, but I know I'm not lying, and whoever wants to see the pictures, screenshots, video, literally just hit me up, and I will show you guys, because this is not shit to joke about or lie about. Y'all just need to accept the fact that he's literally a fucking weirdo.